Imagine you have a beautiful mimic panel. Maybe you made it yourself. Um, maybe you bought one from us or somebody else. And a number of months or years have elapsed and you'd like to add um, a routing option to it. So what are your options? You can either start to drill holes in this, it won't quite look so good, or have another panel made with roots on it. Or one of the alternatives is have one of our plug-in router boxes. So we've made these boxes uh, in a standard size, big enough to take one of our root processors, and it's available with a number of buttons. As the router can cope with up to 24, this one is fully loaded but maybe your needs are something simpler. So what I thought I would do on this video is walk you through this box and let you see how it works. So here's my router plugged in with a power switch ready to go. Um, all I need to do is actually um, wire the panel. Um, just plug in some LEDs. I promise it won't take long. So. Here's the front, the fascia, let's pull that off. This is how it's going to look. And from reverse, you can see we've laser cut it and everything is back to front. So what I'm gonna do is zip through a very fast installation of six LEDs and six buttons. Instead of the LED pairs this time, I'll be using the single LEDs. So I'll plug an LED in each of the six routes and connect it to the router board. So hopefully in about 20 seconds time, I'll have at least half of it done. So there we are, are at the halfway mark. Buttons look good, everything's looking right. Let's add some LEDs. Little press, it's an interference fit and it should not go anywhere else now. It's, uh, it's in, but you can remove it if you need to by gently pressing from the opposite side of the panel. And one. Now what's different about this over the, um, the normal panel wiring is that I would normally attach the multi-panel to the surface but in this little box I don't have the room so uh, it's going to be a case of fit it all in and forget about it. So there's my six LEDs. Let's get some buttons plugged in. So there's my panel hooked up. I haven't actually tried this yet, so I'm sure we'll be good. Let's give it a bit of a twist. That'll tidy the wires up a bit. There we go. Looking good. Feed this through here, onto the top, and down. Ah, we need a network cable. That would help, wouldn't it? Let's get one of these cables and I'll feed that through the hole and we'll plug it in and I will use white on the SDA side that's my personal convention but do what works for you there's our network connected and panel down so I need the screws to secure that this on top 
and so on. Let's see if it lights up. Yep, that's perfect. Okay, I'll put the screws in the side and then we'll see where we go next. Just nip that up and this side. Now at this point the panel isn't attached, it will come free because I have chosen not to PVA it down yet. But what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna go and find a couple of elastic bands and we'll stick that down and see how it looks in a moment. I've acquired some elastic bands, so what we'll do, we'll, um, we'll just fit them and the bands give me a temporary way of attaching the lid before I commit myself by putting a drop of PVA around the edge. So my panel has an external buzzer, an on-off switch, and I've left a hole for the network cable. Quick tidy up. If we turn it on, everything should light, perfect. Let's see how it works in practice. So I have a Mimic panel, desperately in need of some routing and I have a router looking for a mimic panel. If I turn the router on, the lights come on and they'll stay on until it sees a mimic panel. So if you're wondering why they're on, that's because there's no network. Plug this in and they've started going out. It takes about two, three seconds and it's done. It's initialized, it's good to go. So I doubt anything's programmed. Nope. So we know the, the buttons and the LEDs are working. Maybe I should have tested this before. Ah, there's a bit of a route there. Let's call it the default route, shall we? Ah, seems five and six are defaulting to all one way, all the other way. Excellent, so I've already got a route that changes everything. And if I break it with five, I get an alarm, and if I break it with a button on the panel, I also get an alarm. Okay, let's program a route. So I've added my walk around route box, my router, and I want to program a route. So let's have a route that comes in on the red road, down through the black road, and back out through the red. So I want to come this way. So I'm going to assign that to route one, so I'll press and hold route one until the LED flashes, it's ready to learn a new route. So now all I have to do is set that route on my mimic panel. So this one, set the correct way, this one, this one, and this one. And I've toggled these, they're in the incorrect position at the moment, let's move them back. So the router now knows these four points form part of route one, and we're programmed. If I mess everything up in this area, you can see I'm not cheating. When I recall route one, it will re-establish the road through here. And at the moment, every point associated with that is set incorrectly. And there's our route back. So let's have a bit more fun then. Let's have a route from here to here. And that's going to be route number two. Of course, I'd write a label on or something, but for now, I'll press and hold the router till it flashes. I want that one, that one, that one, and that one. So these are the wrong way. So I've identified the, the button. So I want this one up here. Um, I think I'm gonna go across here, up this one, which I've previously pressed to there. One, two, three, four points, route programmed. Let's clear it up and see if it all comes back. Now, of course, if I have uh, solenoids or servos attached, they're going to immediately move to the position commanded by the panel. Okay, let's go for something a bit more interesting then. Let's go around the houses. I'm going to come in on the blue road, go up through the black road, and all the way down and out through the red road. Obviously, really, why wouldn't you want to do that? Um, anyway, press and hold route three till it flashes. 
So I want this one up here, this one down here, this one down here, this one down here, and this one out. And that's route three programmed. Let's check that out. And when I press route three, kaboom. In through the blue, up along the top, green, 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 and out through the red. Hmm, I have one spare route. What shall we do? Let's, I tell you what, let's have a straight line, green all the way through. And I'm gonna do this on route four. So press and hold route four. Straight, 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 straight. Those points are associated with it. While we're at it, and part of the same route, let's set this road straight. That one, that one, that one, that one, and that one. Oh, and this one. So I've got six points here, let's set them right. Now I've indicated to the router which points form part of the route. So it's those six. And for good measure, because I've got three roads coming off, let's do the blue road as well. This is all part of the same route, even though the tracks may not meet. So when I set route number four, now programmed, this road, this road, and this road all must go straight. So let's mess everything up. Was it route five? Nope, that's everything straight. So route six, there we go. Route six is one of the defaults and everything is set to turn. So now when I reinstate route number four, this will go straight, this will go straight, and this will go straight. There we go. Straight, straight, and you can see because there's a light indicating the road, and we're done. Now if I press a set of points not associated with the route, I change them. If I touch a set of points associated with the route, you'll hear the router alarm and the router will flash. Now, one final thing I'd like to cover is, this is showing a connection at the end of a cable. In other words, I can't easily daisy chain this to another panel or anything else. Unless I use what's called a Y lead. These are readily available, I have plenty as well. So if I attach a Y lead, in here, it allows me to plug in each of the panels together and then I have a spare one that I can connect to the next device and you can see it's all still working, tickety boo. Short and sweet video, thanks very much for watching.